We were trapped in our car, and the road in front of us had washed away. This was the worst flood on record to hit my community in North Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I was 13 years old, and this is the moment when I realized that climate change was real and I needed to do something. And I knew that the solution had to start with young people. Climate change has always been part of my life in a way because I've lived in a world where it has always been a problem, and that is the same for all of my generation. And this is why I put climate change on the UK school curriculum aged 15. Thank you. <laughs> I worked with the British Prime Minister and the government on this policy innovation, and the UK was the first country in the world to do this. Since then, many countries have copied, and youth have been inspired to act on climate change in their schools. Since then, I've traveled to the corners of the world to see the impact of climate change on people, community, and landscapes around the world. And I've worked on game-changing collaborations with CEOs, activists, and governments. Now, we've all heard about climate change, and I don't need to tell you how serious this problem is and how many things it affects. Or maybe I, maybe I do, because if we all realized how many things climate change affects, how our access to water would be affected, how our health would be affected, how our economy and security would be affected, then surely we would be doing more. We'd be acting faster. Because to really tackle climate change, we need nothing short of a revolution. We need a green revolution. We need new thinking in every part of our lives. I'm not just talking about one person, one government, one idea, one solution to solve this. What we need is a collective of smart, switched-on thinkers. We need policymakers who can tax fossil fuels and to re-engage and help innovation in energy and industry. We need artists to inspire and engage people to act. We need designers to design sustainable products which are less wasteful and damaging for our planet. And that is true from a design of suits to the design of buildings. We need financiers to invest in large-scale renewable projects to grow our economy while bringing emissions down. We need people who are really switched on to tech to apply things like AI and blockchain to problems like how do we get around our cities? How do we reduce congestion, get more people flowing around our cities, but in doing so, improve our air quality? We need farmers to grow crops in this new climate. We need scientists to tell us when we are on track, and more importantly, when we are not on track and we are missing our climate targets. Everybody has a role to play in this revolution. And this green revolution can start in your home, it can start in your city or your country. But what is really needed to win this battle against climate change is collaboration. And I'm talking about collaboration between sectors, such as a diverse group of people within this room to, to make new, amazing, amazing new ideas and new thinking. But we also need collaboration across borders. We need, to, we need solutions which scale, and we need our countries to act in unison. And this is why I see nationalism and the decline in cooperation and openness that it entails as the biggest threat we currently face when we talk about climate change. Now, I just want to tell you a very quick story um, which a friend from Colorado told me. And I don't entirely know whether it's true, but I really like the story, and I think it really sums up where in the world we are today. And the story goes like this. So in the vast open plains of Colorado, Storms come in, and cows and buffalo react very differently to these storms. Now, cows do something which is very natural. They turn their back on, their, on the storm, and they run. They run in the opposite direction. They run away from the storm. But what happens is the storm 
catches up with them pretty quickly, but the cows keep running. So what happens is the cows end up running along with the storm, prolonging and maximizing their suffering from that event. Buffalo, on the other hand, do something very different, and what they do is they turn directly into that storm, and they run straight through it, minimizing the amount of suffering and pain from that experience. Now, bringing this back to climate change, we've been warned about this oncoming storm, this oncoming storm of climate change for decades, and previous generations have ignored warnings, and we are now facing the dire consequences of their inaction. The storm is now here, climate change is here, and we're in a situation where we either change or we are changed. We either meet the challenge of climate change head on, and in doing so, we create a greener, cleaner, and more equitable world, or we turn our backs and we are changed, and we all suffer the dire consequences of inaction. The impacts of climate change are here, but hope is not lost, and now is the worst time to give up. Make today your moment when you recognize that climate change is real, that climate change is serious, and that you are going to do something about it. This is your moment when you are trapped in that car and the road in front of you is washing away. Thank you.